Hello everyone, Azo here. On today's lesson of Set School, we will be talking about Bootlicer versus Cutlass as the first kind of item on Z. I say kind of item because it's not the, the first complete item, nor it's, is it the first actual item you buy, but it's the first real spike you get in the game. You, you generally, both of these items start off build build out of a longsword, and um, they are both good for snowballing in their own way, because both of them give you a different kind of spike. Now, again, they both build out of longsword. They cost, the different difference in cost is uh, 63 gold, which might not seem like a big deal, but when you are just at the edge where you're sitting on a longsword and you have either, it's either 977 gold or 1040 gold for the... Uh, Brutalizer and Cutlass each. Um, at that point, if you're sitting around a thousand gold, you might want to consider, um, or if you're sitting at just just enough gold for Cutlass, sometimes it's worth going Brutalizer just because you need uh, pots or just because you need wards or something similar. So the extra cost is actually generally, it's basically a ward or two potions. Um, now you don't always have to start out with a door with a uh, longsword. You can also start out sometimes with a Doran's shield if you feel like it. Doran's shield is an okay start. I, I generally don't feel like I need it, but if you have times where it's a matchup you don't like, or if it's a matchup you generally um, lose or do bad in or get very poked down, then going Doran's shield is not a terrible option. Uh, but let's go through. So as I said, there's a spike with Brutalizer, there's a spike with Cutlass. But let's go through the pros, or the specific, the good things about, let's start with uh, Cutlass. So Cutlass gives you, both of these, both, both Brutalizer and Cutlass give you 25, 25 AD. And the difference is that Cutlass, Cutlass gives you an active, which deals 100 damage, magic damage. A big um, keynote there, magic damage. And... Um, slows the target for, I think it's 25% for like 2 seconds, 1 second, something like that. Uh, which essentially says you're going to have a very sticky ultimate. What that usually means um, is that if you be buying it specifically versus a, a slow target, or some a target that doesn't have an escape, um, you're going to have get at least one extra auto attack with your ultimate when you ult. And on top of the extra 100 magic damage. And the lifesteal, of course, lets you sustain a little bit better in lane. It's not a huge amount of life a lifesteal that's worth mentioning. Really, it's it's not. We're not talking about a bloodthirster here. It's a very low percent of percentage of lifesteal, but that does add up in the end. It does let you sustain lane a bit better. But above all, it it makes the lane slower. And going for cutlass means that you are not going to poke as often, because as we go into in brutalizer, brutalizer gives you. CDR and armor penetration. Now, generally, what people always talk about when they talk about CDR is that you're afraid to get over the 25% uh, kind of, you know, the 25% mark on Z, because at that point you might be, if you're not balancing it well, you're going to be overusing your energy. You're going to be getting out of energy very easily. But if you're going Brutalizer, you get the 10 armor penetration, which is huge early game. It gives you very much damage. But then the 10% um, and, and 10 percent CDR might not seem much, but we're, talk we're talking about 1-2 seconds slower, often, more often, of a um, uh, of an W. And it does add up. And in between those Ws, we're talking about a faster Q. Because if you're just spamming Q, and like when you have it up, because you, you, the, the idea is when you have 10% CDR, or more CDR, you get more instances of threat with your Q up, because it's the same as a Blitzcrank hook. It's the threat that he can hook you, not that the fact that he actually hooks you. It's a threat that you can Q. It it plays in, like it plays in the actual um, threat in the lane. So that's it's, it is very, very valuable to get an early Brutalizer, but why does everyone then still build Cutlass generally? You not almost always see pros go for Cutlass as their early item. Generally this is because at level 6 or level 7, around the time when you get your first medium item, your first Cutlass or Brutalizer, um, you are going to get into this annoying phase where a QW from an Orianna shunks you down real good. 
an EQ from an Ari or something similar. These, these are the times where your enemy... 1400 gold is not really a spike for many AP builds. Because that's like, you, you're building half of your Merlonomicon, kind of. You get the, um, what's it called, the 10% CDR, 50-something mana region, and the um, amplifying term, right? So, so you're not really sitting in a spike. They are not spiking, you're spiking at that point. But you're still going to take a lot of punishment, because they're getting to level, level 4 in, in levels of their items. So that's, and, and above all, the, the a 100 magic damage... Which is generally, because no one takes magic resistance, where they said, we can talk about maybe like a 30%, 35% reduction, so we're talking about a, what, a 60, 70 damage, free damage, that's basically true damage then, actual damage, like mitigated damage, um, plus the slow, which ensures one extra auto attack, which might then be your passive, which is not really countered in, like you're not assuming that your passive is in it. It's just one extra auto attack or one extra opportunity to attack more. Uh, it could be one extra E, which could slow it down even more if you're using a W or an R shadow. Um, or even easier to hit your spells, because they're slowed already. But also, mm, like I said, the sustain is very useful, because as a melee champion, you also get poked down very easily from melee attacks. But, the, the main point you should think about when deciding, should I buy Brutalizer or should I buy Cutlass? As I mentioned before, um, if you don't have enough gold and you need consumables, consumables generally go over this, because it's not a gigantic difference what you buy. You, you're going to get both of them either way, and whichever you get, you're going to get the other one right afterwards, if you're doing the build I'm doing. And I... Having tested out different builds as well, I'm not going to say mine is the perfect one, because that's a kind of... It's kind of narcissistic, um, but I'm going to say mine has been working consistently for several several years throughout different metas. I still think this build works, and there is not much I would change about it unless we see differences in items. But I digress. Uh, if you're going to decide when to buy uh, one or the other, cons consider if you need consumables. Consider the big thing, because I'm not even consistent myself specifically when I buy this. It's a lot of, um, it has a lot, lot to do with the, how you feel the Elena has gone so far. If you feel that you can snowball, the big part is, can't you snowball from your lane? Brutalizer is most of the time better. Cutlass means you're going to duel very well, and you're going to sustain, and you're going to be able to keep maintaining pressure over a longer time. But Brutalizer is super aggressive, because your spells deal very much damage. 25 AD... Both of them get 25 ID, but plus the 10 arm penetration and the 10 CDR, it gives you so much threat with spells early game. And if you've gotten a kill, if this is even before, if it's like level 5, even level 4, and you really, really rushed in gold, you get the double kill or something like that, you really ahead in gold, and you get a brutalizer or even brutalizer two long swords. If you're sitting at, at a point, at like a vantage point where you're 10, 20 C is ahead, and you get brutalizer two long swords, you're going to deal a massive amount of damage. I might even consider at some points getting Brutalizer and Pickaxe if you really, really want to snowball, because the awkward... The, the, you, with this build path, you have a very, very nice curve upwards, and then you, you come to a point where it's you got to buy the attack speed, which is... It's really slow there. The attack speed... Actually, I guess it does actually work, now that I think about it. But that's really where it falls off in comparison. So if you want a really snowballed Brutalizer into Cutlass, and if you don't have enough for Recurve Bow, because Recurve Bow kind of makes up for it. I think before, when it was just daggers into Bork, it was weaker, but Recurve Bow does make up for it, because now you're getting more auto attacks, and you're actually getting extra value for the auto attacks, because you're dealing magic damage, right? Um, I actually don't remember the magic of physical... Regardless, you get an extra damage from the recurve bow, and it it does it does help out. It smooths out the curve a little bit with um, with your item path. But regardless, you're spiking really really hard, really really hard. So if you're able to get brutalizer plus two long swords, um, you can almost always snowball from that because a full combo, a full poke combo, a WQE WEQ, whichever you prefer, 
will usually shunk them to even down to 50% if they're not getting a Seekers. Um, usually that, that can shunk them down really well. So that's a relevant part as well. Seekers. If the enemy is going super passive and you cannot snowball from this lane, I would advise against building Brutalizer. Because if, if you're against someone like, let's say, a defensive um, Orianna, who's just chilling at tower, deep pushing and farming well under turret, building a Brutalizer is just going to waste your time, because you're going to get poked down if, slowly. You're going to get poked down. If you go Brutalizer two longswords and you don't already have a kill or a huge, or well, huge, a big advantage in minions, you're going to have uh, a hard time just getting anywhere with it. You're not going to snowball with it. And it's not a huge problem, because you already if you're already sitting at two long swords on top of that, you're 600 gold away from Cutlass, which... not not terrible, obviously. But, you're much better off getting a Cutlass and slowly pushing out the wave, or a bit slower, obviously, because you're not going to deal as much spell damage, and then roaming, or just forcing out a duel where you're slowly getting them to a lower HP, because then you have better sustain than them. Even though, if it's if it's a heal lane, you might be screwed, but not many people play heal in mid lane, like a heal champion in mid lane. Yes, Ari has a heal, but it's it's more of a sustain overall, more than an, an actual heal. If you're against a needly, I'd suggest get Brutalizer anyway, because you can dive that. I digress, again. If you're playing against someone who's playing very defensively, pick up a Cutlass and Roam is generally the best option. Or pick up a Cutlass and slowly get them down to a low HP till the point where you're forcing them out of lane or consistently forcing them to lose HP over time. Again, you or you can build boot lives in this situation as well. I think Cutlass is safer though. Um, so, for snowballing, Brutalizer is generally better, but... It, the big uh, be-all and end-all in this is either works. It's not a huge difference, but if you're snowballing, Brutalizer plus two longswords is a gigantic spike. And Cutlass is a very um, consistent and safe build first. And it also, I think uh, Cutlass does very well with roaming, because the slow and the magic damage is really, really nice. The problem is just you don't really get anything for your sustain unless you actually need it. So unless you're actually getting poked down, unless you actually in a tough lane, or, or you're just not playing that well, if you're not going to get any value from lifesteal, then you're just better off buying a Brutalizer, because the Brutalizer also means, if you have the option, again, between Brutalizer Cutlass, you can pick up a ward as well. So, um, all in all, you have this, the, I, I, to dumb it down, and I hope you don't think only this after the video, but Brutalizer is a, an aggressive item, and Cutlass is a consistent consistent item. I think that's better, but aggressive or not defensive, because you, if you're playing defensive, it's said, I, I, I actually like to play defensive. I really like a defensive, offensive playstyle before I do my first back, because I usually run HP per level. Um, so I like to just go for uh, trades where only I can trade without actually getting hit. So no actually trading, but more poking. And then when you get back with your first spike, you're about level 6, where HP per level catches up to HP. Um, so around that point, I started playing very, very aggressively, and also you're very easily uh, susceptible to poke early game, or very in the early part of early game, by the way. But yeah, uh, you have the the aggressive and the consistent one. So it's it's all about feeling out how you're doing in lane and how you think you're gonna how the, you think the game's gonna progress. Obviously, you make it you make the wrong choice. Not not a big deal. You you you're gonna get both items anyway. So. It's um, not a huge difference, in all honesty, but it does matter, and it is something I've started to to really consciously make the decision lately, which has actually helped out. I've been doing a bit better since I started to consciously think about which is the better item. And honestly, it's not always that I pick up Brutalizer and start just pushing down turret or, or poking extremely hard when I pick up Cutlass. I just I don't really go for plays or anything. Because they're, they're not defining your playstyle. They just have... Their, their own kind of ideas, so so to say. Um, but yeah, I hope that cleared it up. I'll add a small verbal, or no, that's what I just did. I'll add a written uh, TLDR in the end. So 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I will be posting a uh, full game commentary next, where I actually bought a Birdalyzer and snowballed pretty hard. And yeah, business as usual. I'll keep making my uh, set school and talent school or montages and you know. Thanks for supporting the stream. If you want to like the, the video, you can like. If you want to share with your grandmother, that's very nice. If you play League, um, that would be actually really cool. Either way, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. And yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.